All right, so I'm starting to work on the oil lines to and from the motor. As you may know, this motor is a dry sump system, so there is no oil pan. Oil is pumped out of the motor here and then ultimately gets returned here. And in between it goes through uh, a heat exchanger to and from the, the oil sump, which holds I don't know, a gallon or more of oil. And that's how it goes to and from the engine. Um, these are the original, this is the original oil setup. So this is the oil sump here. This came again, came out of the R8. Um, and then the heat exchanger, you can see here. So oil goes in and out of these ports. And here, coolant goes in and out of these ports. So the coolant cools the oil as the oil is going to and from this sump. Here I'll throw up a diagram that you can see of the original setup on the R8, Audi R8, so you can see how that looks. And you can see it's a pretty simple system, pretty simple design, but um, that's not going to fit in the Ultima. So I've got to figure out a better way, a cleaner way to reduce the size and complexity of this system. So here's what I did. I've already cut off, uh, I've taken, these are the original OEM lines that come with the system. I've already cut off the one fitting that goes uh, out of the engine into the cooler. And that's actually this fitting right here. And so as you can see, I've already cut that. I've machined out the inner diameter to receive a dash 16 AN fitting so that I can convert this, I'll call it hard line setup into just a dash 16 hose with some basic dash 16 fittings. So I've got those fittings over here. You can see how this is gonna look. There's a little lip on that fitting that I've machined out to fit perfectly in here. And then what I'll do is weld or braze these two pieces together, okay? And once this is together as one unit, it'll come over here and see if I can do this one-handed and simply bolt right there. So as you can see, that'll convert that oil output where I can just simply screw on a dash 16 AN uh, female fitting or hose and away you go. So I'll do the exact same thing on the return line. So this line right here. And again, I've already got this cut and machined to accept this second 16 stainless fitting. Okay, so then I'll weld that together too. So with the, both of these combined, I've got the input and output of the oil to and from the engine with dash 16 lines. And then I'll figure out how I'm gonna cool that oil uh, and so forth with some, a different sump to store it and a different cooling system uh, as well to, so that it'll all fit in this very tight engine bay. So, most of these parts, unfortunately, I'm not going to use, but I did use the fittings that I cut off here. And the other one I cut off over here. I cut that one off. So let me show you how I actually machined that by cutting off uh, one of these other fittings. I'll show you how I cut that off and then machined it in my mini lathe. Um, pretty straightforward process with the, with the right tools. So let's check that out.
All right, so these things are ready to weld. You saw how I machined out each of these to receive the, the shoulder that's on these stainless steel 16-16 AN fittings. Uh, so the next piece is to weld, next job is to weld these two things together. Uh, so here's where some welding practice comes in, which I don't have too much of, so we'll see how this goes. All right, so after some research, I decided against well, TIG welding these fittings together, given the, the nature and size of them. I decided instead to use this stuff that I found from MuggyWeld.com. It's a silver solder, supposed to be withstand 70,000 PSI. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna give that a shot here. Never used this stuff before. YouTube uh, has some great videos on it. I picked up some extra flux here that you see in this little container. The silver rod itself actually has flux, a hard flux caked on it that you'll see here in a second. But flux is the key. Without the flux, uh, none of this works very well at all. I actually preheated these two parts here a little bit. That's why you see a little bit of steam there. Um, but applying a liberal amount of flux on the inside of the joint, outside of the joint to again, uh, make sure there's plenty of flux in here as I heat it, heat up this part to about 700 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's the melting point of the silver solder. All right, both parts fully fluxed, ready to go, and I'm gonna start heating up this part. It takes a little while, and the key here is to apply the heat not directly on the joint because you'll burn off the flux, but kind of the top and bottom, you can see I'm rotating the heat up and down. And watch too, I've sped, I've sped this up I don't know, eight times, you'll see the color starting to change on the stainless. It's starting to turn like a golden color. Um, and you definitely want to get this to the point uh, where the flux will melt off from the silver rod, as you see, it's kind of got a cleaning action to it. And then um, as you wipe on the silver, it really gets, gets sucked down into the joint, sealing it. Uh, you can see the, the color of the stainless now is turning, turning red, and you don't want it to be bright red. You want to keep it dull red, as per what I learned on YouTube from Muggy Weld. So uh, came out uh, pretty well. This was the first fitting I did. The second fitting, actually, I think uh, I did even a better job. Put the heat gun on this, 768 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the temp at which that, uh, just at 700 degrees, that silver solder will melt. You see the stainless is a little bit discolored, but that comes off with a quick uh, rinse and polish that you'll see here in a second. Now onto the second one. I decided not to preheat this fitting, just to try it out, see if there's any difference. Putting on some flux, getting this set ready to go. The other thing I tried for this fitting was rather than using propane, tried map gas. So I had this old bottle of map gas lying around and uh, fired it up and uh, watch what happens when I start applying heat. Not sure what happened there, but uh, it freaked me out, so I shut it off and uh, put the propane tank back on and went uh, to heat this part up with propane instead. I sped this footage up, but the uh, key here is patience. Just be patient, don't heat the joint itself, heat the part above and below the joint. And uh, that is the trick, of course, with plenty of flux. You can actually move the solder around with the flame. If you get a blob on there, just put a little flame to it, and you can manipulate the, uh, the solder into the joint. All right, all done. Second one done. I had a quick, quick rinse in the sink, and a quick polish with a wire wheel. Uh, turned out a pretty good. Here's the pair, ready to be bolted to the car. I gotta say, this is much cleaner than any TIG weld will do as well. So, uh, with a small part like this, TIG welding is just overkill anyway. So, 70,000 psi will hold up here. I'm pretty happy with it. Let's get it in the car.
All right, so now that I've got this fitting brazed in here, it doesn't look like there's a lot of space to put even a 90 degree dash 16 fitting. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is actually cut this pipe probably somewhere down here, cut off this fitting, um, machine it out like I did these others, and then re-braze it down here because there's a plenty, plenty more room down here to put that. Plus my sump, the bottom of my sump is gonna be right over in this area anyway, so it'll be really close um, and a perfect gravity feed. So, might as well get to that too. So off camera, I actually took the engine back out of the car and cut and finished up, brazed this piece that you can see here. Came out pretty good. Uh, it should be right about where the sump tank will go. Speaking of, stay tuned for the next episode where I build said sump tank.